Hello and welcome everyone. This is Mike. I'm the founder and CEO of Sweet Dash. Welcome back to episode three of the Starting From Zero video series, where we take you on the fastest path to build out a simple and effective portal for your organization. In this episode, we're going to discuss exactly what a portal is. We're gonna to work together to understand how dashboards work. We're gonna introduce you to the content block editor, which is the primary drag and drop editor that helps you build out your content. And then we're gonna introduce you to what we call circles. Okay, so let's get right to it. All right, so here we are back in the same account where we left. I'm logged in as the super admin. I'm on the dashboard. This is the get started block, which is available only to the super admins. So only you would see this as the super admin. And the purpose is, of course, to provide you with information to help you get up and running. In the last episode, we concluded by going over the white label customization options. And of course, that's some really cool stuff there. So I'm sure you all experimented a little, and some of you went all the way and completely customized your portal. And for those people, I get you, right? And so, of course, we did the same thing here too. This is a tab that was open when the last video ended, then some work was done, and now this is the same account, except this account has been white labeled. So let's look at some of the differences. Here in the old tab, you see app.sweetdash.com, the Sweet Dash logo, the default stealth color scheme, which is intended to be a blank canvas where you can start. But now let's look at the new white labeled version and look, here's a custom URL that's in place. Custom logo, custom colors. There's a different font. If you'll see even the font is slightly different, this is a custom font. You can look at the favicon, which is right here where my cursor is. The old Sweet Dash favicon is here. Here's the new favicon. And all the way down to the login screen, which we'll see here in just a second. And you'll notice that the custom colors have been used and taken throughout the platform so that when you set the custom colors, they'll be adopted. And now you can even see the custom loader trying to pop into space. The pages load so fast that you can hardly see it, but it's there. There's a custom loader that will play. We can get a better look at it here in platform branding. And also a look at how the settings look. Here's where your logos will be. You can set a different logo for dark mode. So let's take a look at that. See, a different logo for dark mode. And so on and so on. So there's a lot of things here. But let's look at this custom loader. That's why we're here. So you can use your own logo as the custom loader, and then let's do a preview, and you get something like this. You can customize all the sizes and the way this is presented. So this is super white label, custom CSS, custom JavaScript. These are custom visibility options that help you decide who will see what as it relates to the template library, the academy visibility, etc. So this is very extendable, super white label, gives you the ability to really customize how this portal is gonna work for your organization. But let's take a look at the client side. So here's how we left it on the client side when we logged in as our test client, La Latte Coffee. They saw the generic dashboard here, the first welcome dashboard, we call it the fallback dashboard, and the generic Sweet Dash logo, styling, and URL. But if we go over to this tab, you'll see now that they see the custom URL, the custom logo, the custom colors, and everything is here. Now the menu is still generic, it's still exactly as default, it hasn't been changed yet to accommodate the needs of La Latte Coffee or our company Vandalay Industries, and we're still with the fallback dashboard. But let's go ahead and look also at the login. So here's the custom login that you can set up after you set your custom URL. Once this is in place, then we can allow you to customize completely the login. And there are even options here on the side where you can use quotes or you can use images. You can scroll through. You can use this for testimonials if you'd like. I've used it for kind of a joke because, hey, I like to have fun when I'm doing this kind of stuff. And of course, we all know that Seinfeld is kind of fun. So there's a little joke here if you watch Seinfeld, if you don't, Vandalay Industries is <laughs> a little bit of a theme in that show. So it's funny to me, and that's all that matters. But I hope maybe it's funny to you a little bit. Okay, so let's log back in as the client on this side. And if you remember, our client is Lola Prince. Yep, this one. And a quick login. 
And now we're back in the client portal as Lola Prince, representing the company La Latte Coffee. All right, so from here, let's move our conversation to the dashboard. So what you see here, the default dashboard, and let's move back over to the admin side. And we'll go over to content and then we'll select dashboards. One is the super admin fallback and one is the standard fallback. Now in a few minutes, I'll point you to a video that really explains this dashboard logic. But in short, the fallback dashboard is where the super admin will go if they're not assigned any other dashboard using any other method. And it follows the standard fallback dashboard is where every user except the super admin will go unless they're assigned a specific dashboard using a specific method. So basically fallback is if you have no other assigned dashboards, then you will land on the fallback. And that ensures that everyone has a dashboard of some kind. These are defaults. These cannot be deleted. So let's go ahead and click into the fallback dashboard and it'll look pretty familiar to you. It's the same as we saw on the client side, okay? And by default, it's populated with what we call the welcome block. And if we open this block, you'll see that you can change the images. You can even provide your own image, right? You can upload your own image. You can set the welcome message. This can all be easily customized. If you want to just use something like this in your dashboard, it's here for you. Otherwise, it's just a starting place to ensure that the functionality is there right from the beginning. Okay, so we understand what these blocks are about. We understand what the welcome block is about, but also understand that you can completely customize this dashboard. You can eliminate the welcome block and then start adding other blocks. These blocks are all here for you to choose from. They all have a specific meaning that I won't be able to explain them all now, but there's simple ones like text block and single image block. You can set the row to have various columns widths, layouts, all of this can be set here. So if you wanted to do like a one quarter and three quarters, that's here. And then you can add blocks in this side. Let's just add text blocks to be simple to start with. Okay, so now we have something that's very simple, but of course you can make this very complex. One of the places to start is the template library. So let's look here. If you need some inspiration or you just want to use one of the templates that's provided already, you can go to the template library and filter by dashboard and you can use these templates as starting points. Now here's another tip. You can use portal page templates as a starting point as well. If you like some of these dashboards, you can load these as portal page templates and then from there they can be converted to dashboard templates. So you can really shop in either one of these places to find something that works for you. So there's lots of options, okay? So don't, don't forget about the template library if you're looking for a place to start. All right, let's go back to the dashboards. Okay, and we're gonna be in the fallback dashboard. Okay, so let's just use this welcome block to make my next point, which is, if I were going to say welcome Lola, right? Lola is our representative of Lolate Coffee, thus the name. Lolate Coffee's owner is Lola. And we're gonna say welcome Lola to the portal and maybe we'll just do a different image. Let's just do that. And now let's click save. And now let's go back over to Lola's login. And here we go, Lolate Coffee. Now we say welcome Lola and we could, uh, the spacing is not nice here. Let's look at that because this is something for you to know. If you want the welcome block to be further down the page, for example, you can go to this style options tab and you have lots of options here for background color, text color, etc. But the important one here, if you just wanna move this block down a bit, you might wanna put 15 pixels of margin there. And if you've never used this before, it's not difficult. You just need to figure it out little trial and error let's just do 45 to make it really pronounced and you'll see that now this is further down and if we save and go back other over to the portal and refresh we'll see that this is a little bit further down the page a little bit nicer and you can do this with any of the blocks any of the rows any of the columns and it will help you lay out the dashboard just as you want it and move things around just a little bit to get them lined up to get them exactly as you want them. If that image doesn't work for you, you can move to a different image. 
You can upload your own image. There can be lots of options here. And of course, this is just the welcome block. I'm only working here in the welcome block to keep you focused on what the block builder looks like and what the possibilities are. But let's get back to this where we typed in welcome Lola. So when Lola comes here to our portal and logs in, she sees this particular dashboard. But let's think about this. Are we going to create a new dashboard for every single client as they come in and then change the name to Harry, John, Betty, Alexander, Elena? Are we going to change this name over and over and over again? Then we'll have a thousand different dashboards. Well, obviously, we're not going to do that. So what we need is some way to classify or group together these targets as they come into the portal, as we add them as prospects and clients in our CRM. We need a way to tell the platform that, okay, these people are grouped together and they fit a certain description. And then those clients, they fit a different description. These clients need to be on dashboard A, for example, and those clients need to be on dashboard B. And once we're able to classify our clients into different types, let's say, then we can present each type, the content, the dashboard, the workflow, the experience, the menu, everything just as it's appropriate for their particular needs. So let's use this example and then we'll almost be done with this episode but let's go here and say instead of welcome lola let's use a dynamic data placeholder and we're going to say welcome client first name to the secure portal okay and we're going to save it and then we're going to go back over to the other client side and now we're going to refresh and we're going to see that this still says welcome lola so what does this mean? We've taken the data from the logged in user and we've inserted the first name. Now, what else does it mean? It means that we can use this dashboard now for many, many people, for 100 clients, let's say. So if this dashboard, as simple as it is, was the appropriate dashboard for all the people in Lola's group, in Lola's classification, let's just say, low latte coffee exports coffee to Europe and they have to abide by specific rules as it applies to coffee exporting into Europe and Vandalay Industries deals with say 50 providers that are exporting coffee to Europe Lola is in that same group that same type and maybe they want to assign all those people the same dashboard which has a lot of things the same except for the specific data that is provided here by this dynamic data placeholder that can be as simple as first name or any custom field that you might create will appear here. But also many other placeholders, including project placeholders can be here or company data or their associated salesperson or their associated coordinator. So there's lots of really dynamic options that help you build out these dashboards or portal pages using this dynamic data so that you can assign a group of clients that fits a specific use case in your organization to this dashboard and they can all see the dashboard but the data is uniquely replaced when they log in so in this case when lola logs in she sees her first name and all of the other data for la latte coffee but if another client in her same classification or type logs in, they'll come to the same dashboard, but they'll see, of course, their unique data. And now for those 50 clients that are also in the same business as La Latte Coffee, we have 50 different portals, really, because they are completely different data and it's unique. And each company can only see their own data and no one else's. But we only created one dashboard and we're only assigning one dashboard. So this saves us an enormous amount of time and lets us be very custom and very unique for each client without having to create 50 different dashboards and maintain them and constantly edit them and make sure they're up to date. Okay, so that's really helpful. Now, the next thing you need to understand is that this dashboard, let's say we give it a name, we call it Coffee Europe Dashboard, okay? 
Do we need to go to all 50 of these clients and say, okay, you are assigned the Coffee Europe dashboard? And then constantly, every time there's a client, we have to go and say, okay, you're assigned to this dashboard and those other things over there and all the things that are associated with Coffee Europe, click, 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 100 clicks later, we're finally finished. Well, no, we don't need to do that because remember we classified, we grouped, we typed these clients together. And the way we're gonna do that is using something called circles. So to illustrate, let me move back here. Now we haven't created any circles in this account, but to help you understand, let me click add dashboard. And you'll see if we were gonna call this, remember we said we'll call it Coffee Europe. See right down here, the circle assignment, okay? So ignore all the highest, medium, and lowest. I will link you to a video that will help explain this before we close this episode. But if I created a circle called Coffee Europe and I assigned to that circle all 50 of the individual companies that were doing that export to Europe, then I could just assign this in one place to the circle Coffee Europe and all 50 of the clients, the companies would instantly get access to the dashboard here by way of that assignment. And that's it. It's done. You assigned it using that circle affiliation. You've done it with a group mechanism. And it's great because if one or two of the companies, for example, would decide they didn't want to export to Europe now, they want to export to Asia, and now they need to have a different dashboard, all we need to do is move them from one circle to another. Say we'll move them from the Coffee Europe circle to the Coffee Asia circle, and that's it. All the assignments and automations that we have set up around the Coffee Asia circle, suddenly those two clients will instantly have the access of Coffee Asia circle, and they'll instantly lose access of the Coffee Europe circle. So circles help us efficiently build and assign entire experiences in the portal based on that circle affiliation. And then as someone is entering the portal, we assign them a circle and we understand what will happen and what they will be assigned because we built that experience around that particular circle or combination of circles. And if we need their experience to change during their journey, we can remove them from one circle and add them to a different circle and because we designed the experiences around the Coffee Europe circle, for example, and the Coffee Asia circle, for example, we know what will happen when we move them from one to the other. Now, it's important to say that a client or prospect can be in more than one circle at a time. Usually, you're going to use one main circle and a couple of auxiliary circles to kind of control the mechanisms. You'll see how all of this works as you get more exposure, but circles are a super powerful way to control what your clients, your prospects are seeing in the portal. And one of the first places you'll run into that is here in the dashboard assignment. Okay, so we've talked about the dashboard, we talked about how they're built, and we've talked about how they're assigned a little bit, but let's go ahead and go over to the academy as we did before. And I'm gonna lead you to a video. Let's go here to the SAT series here. And I believe it's here under Portal 101, Dynamic Dashboards, okay? So watch this video. This is the video that will explain all about Dynamic Dashboards, how they're assigned, what the priority order is, how that logic works. It's actually quite simple. Once you hear it explained, it's very easy and you'll be right on it. But this is where you'll start next. Kind of your homework, I guess, to make sure that you really understand Dynamic Dashboards. Okay, everyone. That concludes this episode. Our next episode will focus exclusively on circles. So we just talked about it in short, but the next episode will really dive deep into it and make sure that it's completely clear how it works, give some examples, and I think there will be a ton of light bulbs going off in your head at that moment. Okay, so I'll see you there in episode four. Thanks everyone, have a great rest of your day.